Welcome to the channel guys. I'm Zach with Blades LLC. We do lawn and landscape work here in central Minnesota. And today I'm gonna take you through my lawn care setup. So let's dive into it here. I'm gonna start in the front and I'm gonna work my way to the back. It's the easiest way to do this kind of thing, you know? So out front here, we have a very high mile Chevy 2500 HD. This is a crew cab long box truck. And I find that having an eight foot truck bed is kind of the way to go. You can haul a bunch of stuff in the back. It seems to work out. And then you got the crew cab for the crew. So it's not just, you know, if it's you and a guy, that's awesome. If it's you and two other guys, you and three other guys, it works. So this truck, by the way, you do not have to have the latest and the greatest work truck, guys. Things get beat up as long as they're you know, taken care of in the by the previous owner. It seems like they kind of work out. This truck has 210 plus thousand miles on it. So still going strong, running good. These Chevy 6.0s, they've treated us well. So that's kind of why we're sticking to that. In the back here, I have my spray tank. I just choose to leave this in the bed of the truck. I leave a little bit of water in it, kind of helps weight down the bed of the truck. Uh, this truck has a real stiff rear, so it kind of softens things up a little bit. And then we can use the water when need be for uh, like our backpack sprayers and whatnot. Just nice to have. We, we only put water in here. We do not mix our chemicals in this tank. So it's nice to just have that water available. All right, so this is my Kong 50 quart roto molded cooler here. This thing works out awesome. Seems like it holds ice throughout the week pretty well. So you can throw your lunches, your waters, whatever you want in the back of there. Seems to do well for us. We'll work our way into the trailer now. So this is an eight and a half by 20 American hauler. It's actually made by Hallmark, I think, was what the dealer told me. And uh, it's honestly not the greatest of trailers. Honesty is my policy for these videos, guys. So if you hear me talking about things that I don't like or I'm not happy with, just understand that I'm trying to expose things and help you guys out the best that I can. Would I recommend this trailer? I don't know. It's kind of, it's falling apart already and it's just not that old. We, we bought it this last year. Um, I think I bought it in January and it was never on the road for, it wasn't on the road until April. So April this year. So it's been on the road from April to current. That being said, it's, it's okay. It gets the job done, but it's not my favorite. I think I'd go a different route if I were to do it again, but eight and a half by 20. I got some Glidden. This is a porch and floor paint that I mixed uh, some grits into. I have an older video. Um, on me doing that. So if you want to go back and watch that, find it. Maybe I can leave a card linked above. We can try for that. But if you want to see how I did that, I, I got some footage on it so you can see that. Uh, then we got some E track in the floor. The E track is used for, you know, locking the mowers down. If I'm just driving around town, cruising around town, we don't uh, really buckle them in just because we're in and out of the truck so much. It would be a huge inefficiency besides this whole thing is all framed in and if we're not on the main roads I typically don't we go down the highway or something obviously this stuff is all locked up and buckled in but we'll work our way up to the front of the trailer here we'll just start in the back I know some of you guys have seen this before but for those of you that are new to the channel um, we try to run steel I'm primarily steel guy we have a local steel dealer Princeton rental here in Princeton, so they're right here for us. Uh, we run the BR800 backpack blowers. We're running the X. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but I did end up selling my side start steel. Uh, this wasn't working out for us, so we got rid of that one. We run all X's. I have a BR, well, no, I have an Echo PB9010 that's at home in the garage that we use for leaf cleanups and stuff like that, bigger things. So I'm gonna just get these out of the way. Just park these in the back of the trailer. They come out on every job. 
sit off to the side. All right, so for trimmers, guys, we're running the FS91R. These are the gas trimmers that we use. And this is the KM91R. This is the combi system. For the combi system, we have an edging wheel, a hard edging wheel. We don't do a whole lot of flip edging around here, so when I need to put a nice crisp edge on things, we have a hard edger, that's how I do that. And then we have a chainsaw for this, as well as a hedge trimming attachment, so we can get stuff up high, you know, limb things off. And then I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious about this one. This is the FSA-135R. This is the battery whip. We run these two AP300 batteries and we bounce them back and forth up to the charger in the front of the trailer there. We have that charging right now. And it doesn't take long to charge a battery, guys. How long does it take to charge a battery? 30. That, that, that's gonna be my best guess there. I wanna say it's around a half an hour to charge a battery, so it's really not that bad and you can get a good solid you can get a good solid half hour, 40 minutes steady on these all day long. I mean, you can run them hard at that. So if you wanted to, this has like different power modes to it. So you can run it down on one or two, and then you're gonna obviously get a lot more life out of your whip. So kind of nice. We got it equipped with a Darwin grip here. This is kind of nice. So you don't have to bend over. I find myself kind of going back and forth all day between the two when I'm running the whips. This is our 2020, or is this a 2019? I can't remember, don't quote me on it. It's a 52 inch grandstand. It has 730 hours on it by Toro. Great commercial mower. If you guys are just getting into the lawn care business and you, know, you wanna get one mower that's gonna treat you really well, kinda works on all different types of yards from larger acreage down to your smaller like city lots, quarter acre lots. Uh, the grandstand is definitely the way to go. You can get baggers for them, catch baskets. So if you gotta do clean up work with them, they work for that. And uh, yeah, moving up to the big dog here. This is the Toro Z Master. This is a Z Master 5000 series mower. And this is primarily used for cleanups. It's on its second full season now uh, it's got 300 and just about 329 hours on it this one primarily does bagging work like I said so pretty used and abused uh, I haven't completely been all that thrilled with this mower this one has kind of given me some grief I'm gonna have soon over $500 stuck into the power flow unit on the side I just lost some bearings some bearings went out and, uh, and then the plastic shroud that kind of comes to the tube, if you've ever seen them before. Kind of hard to explain, but there's a plastic piece on there, wore a hole in it. I've wore a hole um, in the top metal part. I'll see if I can get, get you some footage of that, but uh, yeah, tough, tough deal to already have to put that amount of money into a mower that uh, only has a little over 300 hours on it, so kind of tough. The hydros make a lot of noise, and that's pretty common, I guess, but they make a lot of noise, and it, it, to me, they're not as nice as some other mowers that I've been on. So this mower, it gets the job done. That's about it. I'm going to hang on to it, keep making money with it so we don't lose. So we picked up this, this Toro Time Master this spring. This is a 30-inch push mower. What I really like about this push mower is that you can start it up, and you don't have to have the blades engaged. That's super, super nice. I'm gonna shut this off here. Super convenient uh, for you know walking across larger properties to get to your areas that you're gonna push mow. Been super happy with this. Doesn't have a ton of hours on it, but I can tell you what, it sure cuts nice. Cuts and stripes very well. So. Um, going over to the walls here, we keep all of our shovels and rakes and all that type of stuff on the walls. These are just cheap hangers that I picked up from Menards. They're all the way down the walls holding our combis, our, our um, HS56 hedge trimmer there, some pruning shears, and then 
a backpack sprayer. I have I have individual videos on most all of this equipment in here too, so I've been on the YouTube for quite some time. So if you would hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. We got two mid 200s, I think, videos, 260, something like that. The SGA85, I do have a video on this. This is a battery powered backpack sprayer. We keep Roundup in this. Then I hang my jumper cables back here. We've had to jump some things. Uh, they're just super convenient to get to. Custom gas racks and my trimmer line here. I did pick up a spool. Looks like we're just about out here. So I whipped all that stuff out. We'll go back up to the front now. We have a battery powered hedge trimmer on the wall there. We have that backpack sprayer and our whip. They all run this AP 300s battery here and so we got this set up in the front i got a yellow jacket uh splitter here that has four different outlets so a lot of availability for charging different things um it's wired so it's just ran through the front here which i built i set this whole thing up myself cut this all out and uh it's ran down to an inner energizer inverter which runs to these two deep cycle marine batteries and they're wired together here and then i have like some basic charging stuff here this typically will get us through a good day day's worth of mowing these two batteries i charge them every night got the charger here and it's ran through the trailer wall i can just back this into my driveway plug it in. I got my extension cord out in the driveway right now and I just pop it in every night, charge it up and those batteries will get us through a day. I'm kind of working. I have hope and hopes and dreams of putting some uh, solar panels up on the roof here which I think will help trickle charge throughout the day. So if any of you guys have um, recommendations on a good uh, 12 volt solar charger, I mean Throw it in the comments down below. I'd definitely be interested to hear. We have a tow strap up here. Uh, I keep a tarp. And this is not organized by any means, but uh, the bagger for the Time Master here. I have my incident response forms for our, all of our chemical stuff in here. I just, you know, keep all my paperwork for chemicals in here. I got a hand spray uh, spreader here, which stays up there typically. And then into the cabinets, a couple things that I like to keep in my cabinet. We got some dust masks. It's super sandy and dry around here. Um, I keep a rope. I gotta fell a tree or pull on something. That's nice and convenient to have there. Keep a few chemicals, some oil, uh, marking paint, tape measures, oil. Um, some screwdrivers, sockets, Allen wrenches, more oils, extra safety glasses, bungee cords. I think that's the gist of that one. These are like mag magnet doors, so they stick in with magnets. I don't know, I purchased these off of Amazon. They're relatively cheap. This whole Mac brand on Amazon, you can lock them. Sockets, extra deck belts. This one we picked up today, ran into a B issue they're starting to get kind of crazy wasp and hornet spray so keeping this in there we have garbage bags gar more garbage bags landscape staples extra bulbs sanitizer toilet paper uh, things to go in the e-track and our loops tying down extra trimmer head more sockets mole trap uh, the steel tool here this is a big one right here Keep extra well caps in your trailer, uh, the or not well caps, septic caps rather. Uh, these are, uh, I think they're four inches. Anyways, you will run into issues with those, so um, it's just a matter of time. Some extra gloves. These are Kettlers. I have some WD-40 in here, electrical tape, some trailer locks, all sorts of good stuff down here keep an extra, we keep a chainsaw with us, the spare tire down here, keep a, a loo, luggable loo with us. Those are awesome. If you're out on the road, gotta take a restroom break, 
kind of nice. All our rakes are in the ceilings. I don't know if I mentioned that already. So while we're here, there's kind of a lot going on in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cr pretty crazy, but it works out really well. And it's been one of those deals where we've always had what we need for the most part. So it kind of stinks hauling all this around all the time. But at the same point, it's uh, it saved us a lot of money. You know, running to the hardware store, not having something. It's huge. So uh, fire extinguisher up here. And then our contractor's first aid kit that I have mounted on the wall. All this stuff was mounted right inside the door. So that way, if someone needed to get to this really quick, they wouldn't even have to drop the gate on the back. You could just go in the side door. Um, I installed this handle here in this deadbolt. And then I have a, the lock, which we put on at night. I have a couple, these pads probably don't need to be here, but these are knee pads for weeding. And then I have my Mikazi. I have a couple chemicals sitting down here on the floor. They could probably go up in the front, but they're here for now. Okay, so over here, I have my measuring wheel. Find that we use this quite often as well, as well as a pooper scooper. In case we gotta pick up some poop, it's in our contracts that we don't really do that, but um, for certain people, I will. Usually it's just a, a pile here or a pile there. I get really irritated when somebody <laughs> uh, doesn't want to, you know, cooperate and pick up poop. So we don't do that very often, but it's there if we need it. And then down here, I keep a six gallon jug. Use this for washing like chemicals off. If you were to get them on you, you rinse yourself off. This is just tap water that I fill up at home. Kind of nice there. And then what else did I miss? I think we pretty much got through it all. I have a couple, uh, four safety cones down here. Ride in the back of the trailer. Easy in and out. And I am totally losing my voice, guys. So it's going to about do it for this video. I just kind of wanted to give you guys an update. I think it's been, well, I kind of did a walk through this trailer after I first kind of set it up. But I wanted to fill you guys in as to, you know, kind of where it's at now, what's all in there. And to be completely honest with you, I wouldn't really change a thing about this trailer. It's set up just about perfect. I've been in the lawn care industry for, oh, I think this is my ninth, ninth or tenth year now. So I've been in it for a long time. Worked out of open tra trailers, worked out of enclosed trailers. And so I really kind of did a lot of research and, you know, compiled thoughts throughout the years. And, and it was kind of a dream come true, to be honest. So very excited to have the dream lawn care set up here. I'm going to put these back in the trailer. And uh, if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. I'll answer. And, um, yeah, I pretty much get back to everyone. So it's kind of a one of the perks to watching my channel. I'm still relatively small, and so I can answer you guys back. So if you got questions, leave them down below. If not, guys, I appreciate all of you tuning in, watching this video. If you watched it till the end, also let me know that, because uh, I really appreciate it. It goes a long ways. You guys uh, participating and watching till the end, that really helps the YouTube algorithm. So until next time, guys, I'm Zach with Blades LLC. I'll see you guys on the next one. There is no river that runs wide as your goodness. There is